Hello, America and the world. This is Radio Free Market, and I am your host, Michael McKay. We are behind the lines of socialism, my friends, and Radio Free Market is the voice of free people and free markets. Today, our topic is Better Off Stateless in Somalia with Dr. Benjamin Powell. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Michael. Good to be with you. I'm very happy that you could make the time to come with us today, to be with us today. So um, Dr. Ben Powell is an assistant professor of economics at Suffolk University and a senior economist at the Beacon Hill Institute. And next I'm going to announce uh, Mr. Drew Helm, who was uh, uh, our producer for this particular show. And he may be joining us uh, as we go on in the later segments of this particular show. Uh, Drew attends the University of Iowa, where he is studying management information systems and economics. He's a veteran of the U.S. Army, and he uh, was deployed in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, he is a young scholar that I have high hopes for in the uh, coming years. So. Um, when people ask questions about the proper role of government, Somalia is generally used as, uh, by many statists as a prime example of the failures of a nation without a government. Uh, and Ben, you know, they point to the movie Black Hawk Down and say a nation without a government can be nothing but a ruthless land of warlords. Um, Somalia, of course, is by no means a rich country. It does provide an interesting specimen for how a stateless society can, in fact, be a lawful society. So what I'd like to uh, do before we talk about Somalia without a state, uh, we should learn about the history of the country. Uh, Somalia's co uh, government was toppled in 1991 under its own weight. What was the government like in Somalia before it fell? Yeah, so <clears throat> this is the first point to keep in mind that there's nobody in the world who would claim Somalia is some sort of utopia. It's a desperately poor place. It was before it is now. Um, but the perspective you have to take in Somalia, and for that matter, uh, really when analyzing any state, particularly those in Africa, is what I'd call a kind of comparative institutional one. It's a question of given culture, ideology, level of resources, development, etc. how well do they do with a state? How well do they do without one? And that's going to depend on what type of background institutions and uh, cultural norms they can fall back on without a state, and also how predatory the state is that they would be living under. In Somalia, the option is not some sort of uh, Jeffersonian limited government by a constitution. Uh, what they had before was an extraordinarily predatory state, and what they're likely to get again is another one. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, since they got their independence in the 1960s, they briefly flirted with democracy, but uh, came under dictatorship of Sayed Bayer. And he ruled until his government collapsed in 1991. Uh, they, uh, for a while, experimented with what they were calling scientific socialism. But quite frankly, I'm not sure what's scientific about it, nor what's really socialist about it. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly it was a ploy to uh, get military aid from the Soviet Union, which was successful until they went to war with their neighbor, Ethiopia. Um, and during this time, they certainly had massive interventions into the economy, but it wasn't really motivated by socialist ideology as it was uh, to serve a parasitic ruling elite around Mogadishu that basically predated on the rural pastoral sector uh, to transfer wealth to city centers. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the government was spending about 90% on defense administration while having no wars. Uh, yeah, uh, some people, in the last years of its government, they were spending about 90% of their, their government budget on defense and administration. And some people might say, well, listen, I know a little bit about economic theory, and they talk about public goods, and economists will say the ultimate good might be pub, uh, national defense. So that's a good thing, right? Well, no, in Somalia's case, they weren't at war with anybody. This was money spending to defend the government from its own population. That's not a public good. That's a public bad. All right, very good. So when we come back, folks, we're going to come back and talk with Dr. Benjamin Powell, and we're going to talk about what sorts of economic policies the uh, government, uh, previous government, uh, implemented. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 